So everyone's probably familiar with the famous Fermat's last theorem, which says for all natural numbers a, b, c, and n, where n is bigger than or equal to three, we know that a to the n plus b to the n is not equal to c to the n. Obviously, if n is equal to one, there are a ton of solutions to this. And if n is equal to two, we get the Pythagorean triples. And so the really important thing here is that n is bigger than or equal to three and there are no solutions. So it's well known that Andrew Wiles produced the first proof of Fermat's last theorem, which was hundreds of pages long and used some very modern mathematical techniques. Okay, so now the question we wanna look at in this video is what about in other settings? In other words, is something like Fermat's last theorem true in other arithmetic settings, like maybe among matrices or maybe in Z mod P? So in fact, it is not, and we'll look at two examples, one from the ring of matrices and one from the ring ZP. Okay, so let's look at our matrix example first. So let's start by defining a matrix capital. So we'll define it as one, three, zero, one, like that. Okay. And then we'll also need a matrix capital B. So I'll define that as negative one, zero, one, negative one. And then finally a matrix capital C, which I'll define as zero, three, one, zero. Now we want to find the cube of each of these matrices. So I'll let you guys check this nice little trick for finding the cube of matrices like A. So I'll write it like this. 1x01 to the nth power is in fact 1nx01. You can prove a formula like that pretty easily with induction. But that tells us that A cubed, which in our case is 0, 3, 0, 1 cubed, but then using that rule over there, which like I said is easy to check with induction, we'll get 1, 3 times 3, which is 9, 0, 1. Okay, now we're ready to calculate B cubed. And in fact, B cubed has a similar trick to it. It's just there are some sign changes. So I'll let you guys check that in this case, we get minus one, three, zero, minus one. So the signs alternate along the diagonal and the off diagonal, whereas the diagonal just stays at one or minus one, whereas the off diagonal increases. Okay, so now let's also calculate C cubed. And we'll do this by hand out the long way. So we have 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, and then another 0, 3, 1, 0. So let's multiply the last two. So taking the first row in the first column, we'll see that we get 3 in this upper entry. The second row, or the first row in the second column gives us a 0. We also get a 0 here, and then finally we get a 3 here but that's just three times the identity matrix. So if we take that and multiply it into what we already have, we get zero, nine, three, zero. But now let's see, we've got A cubed plus B cubed. Well, that's exactly equal to C cubed. So notice A cubed plus B cubed is equal to C cubed in this case. Showing that something exactly like Fermat's last theorem does not hold in matrices with integer entries. Okay, let's get rid of this and then we'll look at this ZP example, which admittedly is a bit of a cheat. So we just presented an example of three matrices with integer entries that satisfy the equation A cubed plus B cubed equals C cubed, which like I said, is not possible just over the standard integers. Now we're gonna show that this kind of theorem also does not hold over ZP. In this case, we'll take Z5. So that's the integers modulo five. And so that's a ring. In other words, it has a multiplication and an addition. It's just you reduce mod five after every step. So admittedly, as we'll see, this is a bit of a cheat because of something called Fermat's little theorem, but we'll look at that at the end. So let's look at one to the fifth plus two to the fifth. And notice that that's equal to one plus 32, which is equal to 33. But inside of Z5, that's equal to three. That's because we reduce mod five. Now let's look at three to the fifth. 
notice that three to the fifth is three times three, and then three times three times three. I've done that so that we can simplify kind of one step at a time. So here, notice that three times three is equal to nine, but inside of Z5, that's equal to minus one. Likewise, this is equal to minus one. Well, minus one times minus one is one, times three is equal to three. So let's notice that inside of Z5, we have one to the five plus two to the five is equal to three to the five. Again, giving us an example that Fermat's last theorem does not hold inside of Z5. But like I said, this is a bit of a cheat. And that's because of Fermat's little theorem, which says that A to the P is congruent to A mod P and that's going to be for any natural number or really any integer a. But what that tells us is that if a plus b equals c, and that's just happening in normal integers, then a to the p plus b to the p is equal to c to the p in zp. In other words, modulo p. And so this is maybe not as surprising as it originally seemed. And that's a good place to stop.